Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda, your number one stop YouTube channel for everything that is entertainment, real estate, restaurant reviews, and so many other videos that you can actually benefit from. Now, in today's episode, we're at Design Hub, we looked at Tina <laughs> and decided, why not? We had some people asking about visas and work permits in Uganda, and she is the perfect person to ask these questions. And she's also a favorite at Kenganda, right? Yes. <laughs> Everyone at Kenganda likes her, so we had to come back and get her opinion about the visas and the work permits. Hi, Tina. Hello. John, Introduce yourself guys? once again, just in case people don't know who you are. It's a shame they don't know who you are. All right. I'm Tina, an expert assist operations director, and I'm happy to tell you about immigration visas and the prices that they are in in that stock at the moment. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, what can you tell us about visas? That's a big thing. Visas. Uh, visas within the Ugandan market, uh, as I said earlier on, that anybody who is planning to come to Uganda must always have uh, a valid visa. Okay. So the first visa that you would actually get before you plan to move would be an entry visa. An entry visa in Uganda always comes in a package of a tourist visa, which goes for a hundred dollars. Mm. Okay. If you want to stay for three months, if you want to stay for one month, it is fifty dollars. So all these visas can actually be uh, gotten online through their application, uh, this, uh, through the Immigration Uganda portal and website. Okay. Yes. We have various visas in Uganda that uh, actually are suitable for different people, for different classes, depending on what you want to do in Uganda. Okay. We have uh, a visa for people in agriculture, that is a class B. We have visas for the professionals. We have visas for company and directors, mm -hmm. uh, for people who are in business, business and trade. We have visas for expatriates who want to come to Uganda to work, who are actually employed out here. We have uh, student passes. We have dependent passes and all these visas even the diplomatic visas all these visas are actually within different ranges of prices okay so i want today to break down what each visa costs and what it entails okay if someone is out there and asking okay if i want to go to uganda and start a business which visa would i get okay definitely you're going to get a class b a class d work permit and that visa is only gotten if you have an entity established in Uganda. And this visa costs around $2,500 a year. And if it goes up to three years. So you can apply from one year to three years. So if you're applying for three years, you're going to pay $7,500. Then we have the expert employee visa. This is a visa that is called Class G2. So most people who have been employed in Uganda as expatriates go for this visa. And basically what they would need uh, for this kind of visa is of course the job contract, okay. appointment letter, uh, certified academic uh, documents, that is like a must. Mm. And that is a graduate certificate. And this visa goes from also one to three years. You can apply from one year to three years. The most beautiful part of this visa is it goes on reducing in terms of money as the year go by. So for those who are applying for one year, the cost will be 2,500. But for those who are applying for two years, dollars. Yes, dollars. Okay. Everything dollars. is in dollars. <laughs> okay. It will go for four thousand dollars. Okay. And for three years, it will go for five thousand dollars. So as you can see, that it doesn't actually double. It just go on reducing because it's uh, a visa that most companies actually apply for their employees. Okay. Yeah. When we are also looking at um, other visas like the professional visa, like the visa in agriculture, visa in mining, these are all like uh, professional visas. All they would actually require for you to have is um, an entity in Uganda that you're going to work with that is already established and you actually have the right documents. One important document that cuts across all visas is the interpolator from the home country. Mm -hmm. Yes, like everybody who is planning to come and live in Uganda and hold a work permit, they should actually have a letter of uh, good conduct or good standing mm -hmm. from their home country. This is because Uganda cannot actually give you uh, an interpolator 
all that later without knowing your past background because they have no clue of what you have been doing. So once you are actually in the country, you apply with that later. Then if you need to renew your work permit, then uh, the Ugandan authorities would need that letter so that they can give you the Ugandan interpol. So that is how the process works. So in case you are planning to come, please make sure that you have your interpol letter from your states or from any other country that you are coming from. And it should be valid uh, at least for six months. Okay. Yes. So we have other visas as well, which are actually kind of, uh, what, what I can say, uh, additional visas. Oh, okay. These are kind of student passes, oh. dependent passes, because most people would want to say, okay, I want to get married to Ugandan, or I'm married to Ugandan, which kind of visa would I have? It's like a green card, but Ugandan. Type. Yes. <laughs> so definitely you would qualify for a dependent pass. Mm -hmm. uh, since, and the in, most important part about the dependent pass, you're not allowed to work. Really? Yes. Okay. Because uh, they believe that uh, someone who is a dependent shouldn't work. And if in case that dependent wants to move away and start to work, then they should apply for a work, work permit. permit. Yeah. Not so that. that is how it is. For people who want to be here on a dependent pass, you're really most welcome. For uh, You can actually apply a dependent pass like in three ways. Mm. One would be if you're depending on a Ugandan. Another one, if you are actually, due to, uh, you can, because there are those who hold work permits. In case uh, their spouse or their relatives are having a work permit, so you can actually depend on another person's work permit. Imagine, John, if you are actually the work permit holder and you have your husband, mm. so your husband will go on a dependent pass. Mm. Yeah, however, you won't be allowed to work. Yeah. yeah, I don't wish such an any woman. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how it goes. Yeah. And um, we also have the student passes. Oh, yeah. The student passes are actually issued for a limited period of time. Yeah. It goes for six months, it goes for three months, and one year. So it would depend on how your academic structure is, but usually we do uh, a yearly work permit because the cost implication is still the same so someone just needs an admission a valid uh, support letter from the school and also a valid uh, school id and then they can apply for student pass and this is actually one of the cheapest visas around it only goes for hundred dollars. Yeah. I didn't actually specify how much the dependent pass costs. Oh, how much is that? Yes, we have dependent passes for the children and also for the spouses and other relatives. Oh. For the children, it goes for hundred dollars. They are those who come with their children and those children have to be four years and below. When a child is five and up, they are expected to have student passes. Oh. Yeah, so you cannot come here and say, my child is maybe 12 years or 8 years and he's going on a dependent pass. Mm. Immigration would definitely tell you that we are sorry that the child has, is a, you know, a school going child. Yeah. So they would definitely need you to apply for a student pass. Then, um, um, I, wanted, before, I wanted to ask how long is this process to get the visa or the work permit? Uh, the processes are of course uh, a little bit, the timeline are uh, almost the same. However, for expert assist, for them to do it, for us to do this for you, we always give a time limit of three weeks after submission. Because okay. you may say that, oh, expert assist gave me three weeks when you actually don't have the documents and you take another week to get the documents. True. So you, you know, you're cutting short of our time and that is within the contract time. So we start counting after the submission of the application because normally immigration gives us feedback within the second week. Okay. And if it delays, it should be in the third week. Then we get back to you if they need any additional documents or we need the payment so that we can process the approval. Noted. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is so important also to note about the work visas or the work permits that all work permits have to go with a security bond. 
a security bond this is a deposit that is paid according to where someone is coming from imagine if you're coming in from the uk currently the uk work permit at security bond deposit is 879 dollars yes and those who are coming in from like eastern europe it goes to 900 zero dollars those who are coming in from the Middle East, coming in from China, coming in from Asian countries, depending, um, really it is uh, around uh, $1,000 between there. So it would actually, it is very, very unique from country to country. What we have noticed that uh, African countries, of course it is less compared to the European and uh, the Western countries. So the more far your country is, the more expensive it gets. Mm -hmm. And also, when we are looking at this, we are also looking at the, uh, the exemptions. Currently, we are having expatriates from the East African community. Yeah. And the good news there is they don't have to actually pay the security bond. Mm, okay. So these are people who are coming in from Kenya, that is a good news. We are coming in from Rwanda. You don't have actually to pay the security bond. Okay. Though other countries have to. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So before your application actually gets approved, there is what we call a security bond split that has to be paid according to where you are coming from, and then proceed into your application. Yeah. This helps that in case someone you know messes around or misbehaves, immigration has the lead yeah. of uh, deporting this person using their own money. Okay. Yeah. So that oh. is the reason for the security bond. Oh. Yeah. So it <laughs> to is, not waste the government kind, resources. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's kind of banking into uh, your deposit slip of deportation. Okay. Yeah. Do they give you back the money once the work permit expires? Definitely. Uh, once the it's not like what once the work permit expires, yeah. but once maybe you go you back. You are actually maybe you have resigned or oh. your contract is over and they're oh. not going to renew. The company that has paid for you. Oh. can actually claim the money but for people who are under the class d all those who are business owners they actually don't get to reclaim back the security bond so it's only class d2 expert experience that can actually uh, get back their money okay on this oh, noted yes yes then uh we are looking at um also a kind of um a very tricky visa. When we are talking about visa, we are talking about the mount entry visa. There are those who want to say, okay, I want to come to Uganda and maybe for a whole year without having just every visa I come in. Oh. Every time that I come to Uganda to get a, a, a visa. visa. So you would definitely qualify for a mount entry visa. Though terms and conditions apply for this visa. Okay. So the mount entry visa is a visa that is actually given to people who have been to Uganda for so many times yeah. for a period of one year. If you have been in Uganda for a period of one year on several occasions, you qualify for a mount entry visa. Oh. Yeah. That's it. So that would actually save you a lot because a mount entry visa is only two hundred dollars. Yeah. And you it Better. will take you a whole year. Yeah. So there is also what we call the East African tourist visa. This is a visa that um, most people actually would love to go for because it allows you to go through the East African community countries without paying another visa. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to go to um, if you want to go to Rwanda, if you want to go to uh, Kenya, you don't have to pay another visa. You just have to have one visa, then and then East you Africa. can yeah. You can no, okay. Cross. okay. However, that visa is not extendable. So you cannot actually renew the visa. Oh. So once uh, it's expired, it has expired, you just need another visa. Oh. Unlike the Ugandan ordinary visa. tourist visa. Okay. Whereby it can be issued for three months and still extended for another two months. Then the last visa that I actually want to talk about is the special pass. Oh. Yes. <laughs> the special pass, as they say, that it is special. special. <laughs> It is special in a way because it falls under a category whereby there it is called a short-term work visa. Okay. Whereby those who are planning to come to Uganda and scout out the business environment, mm. you're coming out to do a market analysis, you're coming out here to do consultancy, you're coming out for a short contract. Actually, it goes for three months. So it basically gives you ample time to do to work 
and it can actually be extended okay. depending on your reasons for the extension. So it is a visa that I would encourage most uh, business people to go for if they are going to shortly stay in Uganda without applying for work permit. Yeah. But yeah. if they are going to be definitely going to be in Uganda for long, they would need to have a valid facility that can take them for a long time. Okay. And a special pass goes for only two hundred dollars, and uh, it is also issued within the same period. All you need is the contract, the appointment letter. And your passport okay and that you're good to go that's it yes mm. so it, i'm actually you're done, done. <laughs> i could sense but i think if any other person needs more information i'm just going to leave your link down yes. in the first comment section or um the description box so anyone can tap it and go direct to your page and yes, they can do it on a business level email go to our page do a whole consultation do a whole consultation yeah and we are always happy to hear from you yes yes thank you tina thank you so much for You're giving welcome. us your time <laughs> i thought this was abrupt Thank so yeah guys make sure you give this video a thumbs up hit the bell for notification follow us on our social media pages that is kenganda nation on instagram and kenganda nation on facebook i'm your host janita till next time <laughs>